Hi, welcome to The Average Amputee. My name is Jason, and uh, well, I'm an amputee. Hey folks, welcome back to The Average Amputee. This week I thought I'd talk about the process uh, that it takes to actually make one of these. So um, there's a lot of steps in there, and a lot of people I think have this idea of like, you go to the doctor, you tell them you need a leg, and they make it for you. And essentially, I guess it's that easy, but really what it is, is you start with a prescription. You have to go to your doctor, your primary um, doctor, and say, hey, I need a prescription for a leg. They hand you a piece of paper that says, uh, issue one leg to this person. Uh, they take that, you take that to your prosthetic engineer, and they will uh, measure you out. So it used to be, the process was, they'd take your stump, and they would cast it, like a regular cast. They'd wrap it in plastic wrap. They'd make some marks as far as pressure points and trigger points and stuff. And then they would cast you. They'd slip that off once it dries and they'd have all those markings in there. And then you would leave, you'd go for a week. Now they don't do that, um, at least my guy doesn't. He has a machine, uh, put on a liner like you've seen in the previous videos. And they use a laser machine. It looks like a, almost like one of those ultrasound ones. And he just, Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it might actually be an ultrasound wand. But um, they do a 3D rendering of my leg. He just scans my leg with the laser and it creates um, my stump on the computer. They then take that and they make the shell, which kind of looks like this. Um, it's a hard shell, it's usually clear. I would imagine some kind of plastic and it's temporary. They'll attach that to a temporary um, shaft here with a temporary foot. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in the office, you're gonna spend about an hour, and you're gonna try that on. They're gonna make some adjustments, make some notes. If there's pressure points they didn't quite get, um, or sensitivity marks, maybe the angle is wrong, you'll do some adjustments there. On some occasions, it used to be a lot more frequent, but now there's you know rules and regulations. Um, it used to be able to take a, a check socket home and actually use it. Because the problem is, is you're gonna be using it in an office in um, you know conditions that you normally wouldn't. So I used to like to take it home for a week, try it out, maybe do some walking, walk around the office, go up and down stairs, that kind of thing. Um, if you're lucky enough to do that, that is the best recommendation if they'll let you. Um, the issue there lies is it's not a permanent fixture and something could happen while you're walking. It could break, you could fall and hurt yourself. And unfortunately, some people have um, taking check sockets home and then tried to sue the companies making them for them because they fell because it broke So I think a lot of companies are trying to stop that and they're really prohibiting you from taking them home, which eh, Whatever, but so you'll leave the office you'll come back and you'll have something closer to this Or it'll look like this you'll put it on it's pretty much your final foot final leg and they'll uh, make adjustments minor adjustments if there's some little tweaking to do and then you're pretty much good or so you thought so just because you leave the office with your permanent leg after a month or two of fixing and adjusting and whatever doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect again with time comes change so you could use the leg for a couple weeks maybe a week or two and still need some minor adjustments maybe something happens in between here and then um, from my experience in the past i will say Trust yourself. Don't let a doctor or practitioner tell you what you're feeling because uh, nine times out of 10, first of all, they have both of their limbs. Um, and uh, if they don't, everyone's different. So I have had instances where I have said, hey, this is what I'm feeling. And I've had a practitioner say, no, you're not. So I've gone and switched practitioners myself because of instances like that. Um, I really needed someone that was gonna listen to me. So here I am where I am at Hanger. Um, they should be able to work with you. So find someone that really does want to work with you and make that leg or limb um, perfect for you so it fits and feels good. Um, now, with the leg, those sensations I'm talking about, if you feel something wrong, if you feel that something's not right, make sure you speak up. Because I will tell you, a little, a little pinch or a little bump or a little pressure point that you're not really thinking is a big deal because it's, it's, you can feel it, but it doesn't hurt. It could become a big deal later down the line. Um, it could cause rubbing, it could cause rashing, it could cause bumping. You could get a cyst, you could get uh, ingrown hairs because of it, because of the way that it's working. 
you got to avoid all that stuff as much as you can. So make sure you speak up. That's very important with any limb, with anything really. I think speak up with any medical condition. If you feel like it's not right, it's probably not right. The other cool thing about the leg process is, you see this? It's like a fiberglass. They can pretty much put any design on this in a fabric format. So if you have some fabric or you have a picture you really want on your leg, you can print that out on a t-shirt or a piece of fabric and give it to them and they can wrap it. So I have a video, hopefully here, otherwise I'm pointing to nothing, of my last leg that um, I was really excited about, huge Disney fan. So I had it wrapped in this Disney fabric. I think it looks amazing. Uh, unfortunately, that leg didn't work out because it was an air compression system and I decided this, it, it wasn't working for me. So we went back to the drawing board, but my new leg will have something similar, but you can really do anything you want um, with these things. I've seen some cool designs, flames and paint jobs and whatever else. So, um, but that's pretty much it. That's the process of making a leg. So one of the questions uh, on YouTube last week was actually funny enough from my mother um, asking me what type of prosthetic have I had in the past that caused the most issues? And that's a really tough question to answer because uh, out of the two different types that I've had consistently, um, each had its own issues. So I was getting a lot of uh, ingrown hairs and a lot of pressure point issues with the um, air compression system. Um, whether the it wouldn't it wouldn't seal all the way or whatever, my leg would move. This the end of my stump would bruise a lot because of the impact. If that system doesn't seal all the way, you're gonna move. You're gonna bottom out and you're gonna bottom out and you're gonna bottom out every step that you have. And it causes some pretty bad bruising, so that hurt. Now with the button system, I think I've mentioned it before, if that first liner rips, air gets in and you're gonna get a lot of movement there. But the other problem is you're gonna get a lot of sweat. And that sweat, if not taken care of, meaning dried out and washed out consistently, causes heat rash. Um, outside of all the bacteria and everything else that's in there, that heat rash, it burns and I'm one for washing it in soap and water. I've tried lotions before and the lotions have made it even worse. So once you have a heat rash, that's uh, two days about for me of not wearing that leg. So each leg kind of has its own threats, I think. Uh, you can also get ingrown hairs, blocked sweat ducts like I've had in the past, um, or sweat glands, sorry. And that's that causes some bigger issues, some um, infections, it can. And I've had to deal with those as well. I think we've discussed uh, the surgically removed day surgery uh, sweat glands, getting those pulled out. Um, that's not fun. Anyways, um, that's the process. It's pretty cool to be involved with and... Uh, you know find yourself a good doctor and you'll be good so that's it like i said hit subscribe down at the bottom if you like these videos leave me comments or uh questions i love questions i'll answer them on this show anytime you have them and uh, until then i guess we'll see you